Good morning and praise the Lord. We want to thank you and welcome you here to Good News Christian Center Church where Jesus is Lord. And do remember, we're here on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock for our weekday Bible study. So we'd like for you to like, share, do what it takes to help get the word out. Amen. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and get started with prayer. Father, just thank you again for another day that you've made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I pray now, Lord God, that as the word come forth today, it shall pierce the heart of the hill, Lord God, and they shall be transformed into doers. Thank you, Lord God, that as it manifests, they shall manifest in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, we ask for it and decree it done. And so now in Jesus name, amen. amen. Praise God. We have been talking on the topic of he remembered me and uh, we've been there a while. And I said I wasn't going to talk about it no more when we was going to finish it. We just going to roll on. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said roll on. <laughs> It's been a good topic to me. Uh, I've had some eye openers because the Holy Spirit has been teaching me as well. And, uh, but with that being said, I'm, I'm glad and I'm taking my time to go forward with it because lots of time in this walk of faith or in this, on this Christian journey, because it is a journey, we sometimes seem like things are being prolonged, but sometimes it seems like they're delayed. And we decree and declare no more delay, but we cannot despise delay. Uh, delay was put on a place lots of times, you know, you be driving and somebody cut you off and, you know, you get a little, some, some feel some way about it. <laughs> and uh, you get on up and you see something had happened and it could have been you. So you cannot despise delay. You have to accept it as it come because God is going to get you where he's leading you to, amen. amen. So he have not forgotten you, so you don't have to rush. Uh, as the song say, I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> I said, I'm not in a hurry, amen. Somebody said, let him have his way. Let him have his way. Hallelujah. Let us kind of fall back to where we were last week. Um, let us go over to Ecclesiastes chapter two. <clears throat> we'll start there. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26. And it reads, For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. Now notice what he giveth to a man who's good in his sight. Wisdom to work with, knowledge to know, and joy to enjoy what he's doing. Because sometimes, you know, David said, Lord, rejoice, I mean, restore the joy of my salvation. So sometimes we can, we, we're saved and we can get to this place where joy just ain't there. But you have to choose joy. You have to choose joy. So he give it to you. He gave it to you. Can't no man take it away unless you allow him. Uh, I notice sometimes you could be uh, thinking on some things all of a sudden a bad thought come in and feel like you kind of get a little dip in the, uh, in the spirit. Cast that thought down. Don't sit there and wonder, well, where did that come from? You know where it came from. It came from the enemy because he just told you what he gives you yes. when you're good in his sight. So if you follow these things, the enemy can't win over you. He cannot take advantage over you. It's for God give it to a man that's good in his sight, wisdom. If you got wisdom, you must use it. And knowledge to know what's going on around you and inside of you. And joy. But to the sinner he gives travail together and to heap up that which he may give to him that is good before God. This is also, this also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Now, he's saying here that he's working it up and he's gathering it up because God has him doing it, but he's doing it for him who's good in the sight of God. That's what he's doing it for. Say he's working for me. See, this is, this is the way the kingdom works. This is the way the Bible says that God taketh down one, come on, and putteth up another, but he must be good in his sight. You know, the Bible also talks in Matthew 6, 33, says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So doing it his way, God's way, is the kingdom way. And it, when you're working it the kingdom way, it doesn't seem like you're winning. See, because, and this has been said before and times and times again, it's not about how they treat you. 
It's about how you treat them. See, because you're the one saved. If you don't work the kingdom, that's the way they go. It's about how you treat them. See, you're really, you're in control. But how are you going to control it? You're going to work the kingdom? Or are you going to let the world work you? You're going to have to work the kingdom. Because see, the, the world said, get them before they get you. <laughs> but the kingdom is always talking about so on. He said, do as unto them as you would have them to do unto you. Uh, one place says, as you would another man do unto you, do you also unto him. So we have to make sure that we are getting seed in the ground. And seed is not always money. Seed is deeds as well. So we have to do, if you're expecting to receive good, what are you going to have to sow? You have to sow good. That, that a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I, I never forget some years ago, I was listening to one of the guys that I used to, ministers that I used to study with. And he was saying that when God gives you something to do, God like a prompt to do it person. If you slow by doing it, you're going to be slow by reaping. Because that that a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This is not just with people. Now, this is with God as well. So you want to make sure that what God gives you to do, you want to do it properly. You want to do it right away. You want, so you want to be quick to do it. You want to move on it. You don't want to sit back and just kind of, what they said, think long, you think wrong. You don't want that. You want to be willing to move right ahead. See, the key thing about it is that you be willing. You be willing is the key. You must be willing. If you're not willing and you're just doing it, I don't know, you're not going to read from that. He said in uh, Isaiah 119, if you be willing and obedient. So you first got to be willing. You know, Paul was talking to the Philippians. He said they first gave of who? Themselves. They first said we're available for whatever the gospel has need of. We are available to be a part of it. So when you give of yourself first, that's a willingness. That's a willingness to do it. And that's what you want. You want people who, you don't want people who just kind of just doing it because it's to be done. And you want to, the Bible says, serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. You want to make sure that you do it where it is received. Amen. 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 Don't do it because it's just to be done. He said, for God give it to a man that's good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy, but to the sinner he give it to veil, to gather and to heap up, that he may give to him that is good before God. Say, I'm good before God. Now, you have to work that out. Uh, the Bible talks about work out your own soul salvation. Yeah. Let us go to Proverbs chapter 28. Next book over. No, 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 not the next book over. Back to your left over. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 8. He said, he that by usury and unjust gain increases his stuff, substance. He shall gather it for him that, is, that will, come on, pity the poor. For him that is pity the poor. Now he's working for him that is good with God who will pity the poor. See, one thing about it, our job is to take care of the poor. Yeah, Jesus made the statement when they was putting that ointment on his feet, they was complaining about what they could have sold for and how much they could have gotten for. He said, hey, Dad, he said, you poor. They'll always be with you, but me, I won't always be with you in the flesh. You know, he's here with us in spirit, but not in the flesh. So notice what they was, they was trying to get some money to give to the poor. I really think they just wanted it for themselves because Judas had the bag. But notice, even when the rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, why callest thou me good? Only God is good. And he said, said sell what you have, give to the poor, take up your cross, follow me. The Bible said he walked away grieved. He was mad, but he first told Jesus, I've done all of that. That's, that's when Jesus told him what to do. Um, he was mad about it. He wasn't going to let go of that money because, but notice what Jesus told him to, get, to do with the money. He said, give it to who? The poor. The poor. See, all to give to the poor. That's, that's a mandate. Give to the poor. He didn't ask for a dime for himself because he had plenty. He had more than enough. He said, give to the poor. So that's something that we must do. He was telling them what he needed to do, give to the poor. 
Give to the poor and come on, follow me. See, Jesus was really telling him, if you unload on this side, when I get you on the other side. He wasn't talking about the joy, neither. He's talking about on this side of salvation. The increase will increase. But see, sometimes people don't trust that. The Bible says your heart will be where your treasure is. And he made it, well, he manifests the scripture. <laughs> he made sure his heart was where his treasure was because he kept it all and walked away. But Jesus never called him back and said, let's negotiate or let's make a deal. He stayed with it. He told him, see, God is not changing. He didn't come for us to change him. He came that we may be changed through his lifestyle, through his living, and that's what we're supposed to do, yield to him, yield to the word, yield to the Holy Spirit, and you'll see things happen for you. But sometimes people do not want to yield to the word. They want to do it their way. They want to do it their way. But now our job is to distribute to the poor. And as we distribute to the poor, you're going to see God increase you more and more. That was something that my pastor told me years ago. He said, if you stay in missions, you'll never lack. And I'm going to tell you, it has proved itself by the word. If you stay in missions, you'll never lack. You've got to be in that place where you're giving. You've got to be in that place where you're reaching the poor. I mean, he said, uh, and Jesus made the statement, said, when I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, when I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. See, all these things. And they said, Jesus, when did we do this? He said, when you did it to the least of these little ones, and in those categories, he said, you did it as unto me. And you know what? He'll always remember you. You got to stay in those missions. You really do. I found out that is a key place to stay. I mean, a tithing, is, 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 tithing is the thing. You, you got to tithe. You got, you're looking for full effect. You're going to have to tithe. But then when it comes to giving to the poor, that's another level. See, you don't, you, don't, you don't reap hundredfold off your tithing. You reach that off your offerings. That come from offering. They don't come from tithing. Tithing, he said, he opened the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. There should not be room enough to receive. Now, those blessings are opportunities to take and to get and receive more. But then, he said, the tithe and the offering. So the offering, uh, you receive Psalm 30, Psalm 60, Psalm 104. But there's one scripture say, when you do it for his sake in the gospel, he did not mention 30 and 60. He said, somebody said 100 fold. 100 fold. The whole thing. Lord. You can get it all when you do it for his sake in the gospel. See, you want in your giving, you want your motive right behind it. See, I, I have come to a place of when, it, uh, when it comes to giving, I don't even have to show up. I don't have to be seen. Because, see, we are to be hands and feet for Jesus Christ. We don't always have the idea this and idea that. We're going to get to some of that in here. <laughs> you just want to be a part of it. You just want to be a part of it. I participated. My name don't have to go on the book. God sees and God knows. I'm expecting mine from him. Therefore, I'm doing it as unto him. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go to Isaiah chapter 45. This is just catching up from where we was last year, last week. I almost said last year. Isaiah chapter 45, and let us look at verse 3. It said, I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name, am the God of Israel. He was saying here that I am the God of it all. I give you these things, but God, listen, God gives you these things, whatever it may be, all he wants is the glory. Somebody said, give him the glory. glory. Don't touch the glory. Don't touch the glory. You can have all the gold you want, but don't touch the glory. He said, my glory will I not give, come on, to another. So when God do something for you, don't, don't, don't hesitate to give him praise. Give, it, give him the glory. I remember back when I was getting my CDLs, I, <laughs> I had went down and uh, I'd taken the test five times. And I mean, every time I went, they gave me a different test, you know, and you study so hard on what you missed and, and every time none of those questions was never there. <laughs> so it kept, it really, really, it made me dig deeper and study harder. And um, 
I went the fifth time, and I went up to the one. I said, I'm going to go in here this morning. I'm going to let them know. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you. I, I went to the one, and I told the attendant, I said, sir, I've been here five. This is my fifth time here today. And he said, oh, really? I said, yeah. And I said, I came to finish up. He said, okay, okay. Give me. I gave him my, you know, to give you a, a card, a duplicate you know, for your driver's, your CDL, and I gave it to him, and he said, have a seat right there at the booth. I went over to that booth, and I began to take those tests, and before I can finish the first test, confetti fell all over the screen. <laughs> I passed that. Didn't even have to answer. You, you, I think it was about 80% of the questions you had to answer, something from wrong, I mean, somewhere near. 80% of the questions you had to answer, and you had it. And then he gave me the next test. And then the confetti fell again. He gave me another, about three or four tests I took and confetti kept falling. And, um, and they said, congratulations. And the place was full now. This is the, the uh, DMV, you know. It's full of people. And that fourth, that fourth test hit, I shouted, thank you, Jesus. And everybody, was, all eyes was on me. Listen, I wasn't scared. The man said, come on up. <laughs> I was not, not going to apologize. No, I had to give it up. Somebody said, give it up for Jesus. I had to. I mean, he helped me with that test. I had been down there five times, and I had to go down there and say something. And I finally got my CDL. Hallelujah. 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 That's been 20-something years ago, but I'm just saying, it was a challenge. And I knew God did it, because all those questions came together after taking that test all the time. But it showed me I truly hadn't studied hard enough. I hadn't studied hard enough, but when I went in there and gave it all that I had, he responded, Lord have mercy. <laughs> and I just shouted, thank you, Jesus. And everybody was looking at me. I know somebody said, I need to try that. <laughs> well, try him. You can't try him. You got to do him. Yes. Amen. Somebody said, you got to do him. Yes. <laughs> but verse three again. It's an I will give thee treasures of doctrine, hidden riches of secret place that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, am the God. I, I, the Lord, which called thee by name, am the God of Israel. Yeah. Go down to verse 23. Verse 23. It says here, I have sworn by myself. The word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. Then unto me, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say in the Lord. Have I righteousness and strength? Even to him shall men come, and all that I incensed against him shall be, come on, a shame. If you're against him, you're not going to win. You're going to be ashamed. At verse 25, in the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. You know what he's saying here? He's saying all Israel is going to be made righteous. That's the word. That's God speaking. He's all of Israel going to be made righteous. God said that. And sometimes people want to analyze it. Uh -uh, I'm going to go with the word. I'm going with it. I'm not going to wrestle with that. He said, all, not some, but all shall be saved. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Because you've got to give him the glory. Verse 31, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 31. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory, come on, in the Lord. Let him glory in the Lord. Somebody said God did it. You got to give him the glory for it. There's no other way. There knew that King Herod, after he had been retired and returned to his hometown, and uh, uh, he was speaking with the people. And as he was speaking with the people, uh, they said, it must be a God. And instead of him giving God the glory, he did it. And the word says that worms ate him up and instantly he was gone. You got to give God the glory. You really do. I mean, because, see, you didn't do that. You, you, you didn't do it. You was present, but you, you didn't do it. Listen, David knew. That's why David was able to write all them songs. He knew when he grabbed that bear and that lion, he knew something else was going on. I mean, that ain't common. That's supernatural. See, that, that, that's supernatural. Let's see, I'm, I'm trying to 
Oh my goodness, scripture's coming to me. I'm trying to find it. Uh, mm. Oh, let's see. It's been a minute since I used it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it somewhere. The scripture of uh, it's uh, I believe it's in Samuel, where um, he told him he's gonna come up with two men and he's gonna be turned into another man. He's going to prophesy with them. Uh, hallelujah. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. First seven, ten, six. Okay. Somebody been taught. Somebody been taught in the word. Uh, oh, my God. Let me back up and read a little of this. Hmm. This is when he was going up to Bethel. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm trying to see what I should need to start it to get this. Go to verse three. Let's start with verse three. Ah, I got to go back a little further. Go to verse one, chapter 10 and one. It said, then Samuel took a vow of oil and poured it up on his head and kissed him and said, is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? When thou art departed from me today, when thou shalt thou shall find two men by Rachel's scepter in the border of Benjamin at Zilzah, and they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found, and lo, thy father has left the care of the asses and sorrows for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then shall thou go on forward. Somebody say, I'm going on forward. I'm going on forward. From thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall me, and there shall meet thee three men <clears throat> going up to God to Bethel. Bethel is the place of worship and carrying three kids and another carrying three loaves of bread and another carrying a bottle of wine. Sound like they're about to commune here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sound like they're about to have communion here. Verse four. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive in their hands, receive of their hands. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city, that thou mayest meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with psaltery and with a tabret and a pipe and a harp. Before them they shall prophesy, and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord, watch this now, and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. Let me stop right there for a minute. And David knew when he came to those challenges, something was going on. And he knew it was the spirit of the Lord. It was the spirit of the Lord. And the spirit of the Lord, verse six again, the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them and thou shalt be turned. Come on. into another man. See, <laughs> see, when these things happen, you know that it's not you. It's you stepping out in faith and God manifests. The anointing manifests and calls that thing that you couldn't do to happen. See, the anointing is the ability of God that comes on human flesh to do what no man can do. That's what the anointing is. So sometimes when you come to these, these things and, and you know you can't do it, Go on forward from thence. Somebody said, keep, keep going. Trust God. He's going to show up and he's going to show out. You, the victory already belongs to you. You just have to have a faith to keep going regardless of what's before you. Now just think about David running up on that lion. A lion? Are you kidding me? And he was just but a kid at this time. He was just keeping sheep. He was the least. And then a bear. And then all of a sudden he looking for a Goliath. <laughs> David said, who is this? Who is this cat? <laughs> and that's what he was saying. Who is this? It's talking all of this talk. And talking about defiling the armies of the living God. Who is this? Where is he? And then David said, I'm going to have to have a little conversation. He said, what's in it for me? <laughs> I don't know what's in it for me. See, God is not trying to get you to serve him for nothing. God wants to keep you healthy and make you wealthy. Yes, yes, 
That's what he wants to do. He don't want you just doing something for him. You know, and sometimes people really fall into that. I'm just serving the Lord. You, you don't have no expectation for nothing? Okay. Let me read that again. And the spirit of the Lord will come up on thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned unto another man. And let it be, when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee. Come on. For God is with thee. Somebody said, give him the glory. Because he's with you. This is not you alone. You're not alone. You're never alone. God is with you. And whatever come after you, God has you. All you have to do is keep going. See, God would not send you to battle unequipped. Unequipped, he will not. It's just like the military. We're in God's army. And when they send a man out to war, they give him everything he need. Everything he need. Everything. So here we have to know that when we really de are depending on God, you'll see God manifest, but you have to give him the glory. You have to acknowledge him. God, somebody said, God did this. God did all of this. I only showed up. God did it. I said, God did it. I only showed up. Hallelujah. I only showed up. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 31. That's all he needs you to do is just show up. <clears throat> just give him the glory. 1 Corinthians 131, it said, that according as it is written, he that glory, let him glory in the Lord. Now go, go over to Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9, let's look at verse 23. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory glory in this, that he understand and knoweth me. See, David understood and knew God. So he knew however or whatever he went up against, he knew it was going to come out well. Say, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. <laughs> David wasn't afraid. But if you take a look at it in the natural, the average would have bagged down. But when David looked at how big he was, he said, this is the God size. This, <laughs> this is God size. See, he told Moses, he said, if it's too big for you, come on, bring it to me. Y'all better get this. <laughs> if it's too big for you, bring it to me. And David knew this. David knew it. Said, oh, this is the God size here. This is the God size. Because it ain't nothing too hard for God. Not a thing. Ain't nothing too hard for him. Let me read that again. Verse 24. But let him that glory, glory in this, that he understand and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things, come on, I delight, says the Lord. So the loving kindness and all of this, God liked this because he judges from the heart. Man look at the outer pen, but God looks on the heart. See, you would you never, if you were going to have a fight and you were going to reign, you never would have put David against Goliath because <laughs> you were looking at the outer appearance. But God said he was a man after his own heart. He was the one for the job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was the one for the job. My goodness. Go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We must be in this place where we are trusting God at all times with all things. Never looking to the left nor the right, but keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on the word. Give him the glory. Don't ever hesitate to do it. Before you go in, tell him. It ought to be in your prayer. Father, we thank you for this victory. 
because we know you are here. And you call us to it, and you'll see us through it. So right now, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. And we decree yes. that it is so. Yes. Now go into battle. It's already sealed. See, the Bible said God looks at the end from the beginning. Somebody says it's already finished. It's already see, we're dealing with the finished works of Jesus Christ. We're finished with the, finished, dealing with the finished works. And so if it's already done, all we have to do is go into it. And don't be afraid. Second Corinthians chapter 10. And let us look at. Let's start at verse 14. It says, for we for we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Now, boasting of things without our measure, not boasting of things without our measure, not boasting of things without our measure. That is of other man's labor, but having hope when your faith get this now when your faith is what increase, you got to believe bigger. You got to You can't stay in that same place. You got to believe larger. You really do. And your faith because see, you get stretched. You stretch your faith. Sometimes it takes a little longer. Your faith is being stretched. So he says here when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged. See, your faith caused others to be enlarged. When your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule. How? Abundant. Just a little bit. Abundant. Just a little bit. Abundant. Just a little bit. Abundant. Abundantly. Yes. See, faith causes all things to increase. See, the same faith it takes to get healed is the same faith it takes to get finances. It's the same anointing. You just got to believe on another level. Verse 16, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand, but he their glory. <laughs> Let him glory. Come on. In the Lord. Somebody said the Lord did it. The Lord, did. the Lord increased them because they did it as unto him. And see, and sometimes people do things they think they did it. That's why God had the discussion with Gideon. He said, no, nah, you got too many. And see, God was showing right there and he didn't like that. Because if you go in there and do it with them, they're going to say they did it. Yes, yes. Somebody said they had the equipment. They did. They had all they needed to go in there and take it, but God didn't want them to get it that way. See, God wants to teach you faith. He wants you to use your faith. It's just like back some times ago, we was a I'm not going to go through all of that. Uh, getting out, changing schools with our kids. And, and uh, we got to the one school that could take two of them, but one of the kids they could not take. So, you know, we, we praying and saying, how must we do this to the devil? I know it was him. He said, you know, such and such is on the board and he know you by name. Just call him. He'll do it for you. No, if I had called him then, I wanted to call him again. Amen. And see, when you're dealing with people, they get tired of you coming like that. Somebody said, but God is always right there for you. And I said, no, we're going to believe God in this matter. And God's going to manifest. We're going to believe God in this matter. We're not going to nobody. So we prayed about it. And you know what? God did come through. God, and at some time, it looked like it was not going to change. We went 11 days past the deadline, but we stood. The Bible says, after doing all, stand. Stand what? Therefore, God know what you're standing there for. <laughs> Don't be moved by the deadline. Amen. Don't be moved. Who that Joshua told the sun and the moon to be thou still in the valley of Agilon? Yes. And the Bible says it stood still yes. about a whole day. Listen, it stood still as long as he need to whoop some more heads. <laughs> when he got through warring, he said, all right now. Watch this. Now, I'm paraphrasing now. Don't, don't y'all throw the preach under the bus. He said, when he got through, he said, okay, let the good times roll. <laughs> he said, I'm finished now. Let the good times roll. See, sometimes people be so tense, they can't even laugh. Looking so holy, they really look, you know, a little deranged sometimes. Is he, he going to be all right? Look how they looking over there. I might need to leave here. <laughs> no, enjoy your life. God wants us to enjoy this yes. Christian journey. Yes. 
He didn't want you all so tensed up, you know, like, you know, you're about to hit somebody. You know, but you know, once upon a time, that worked well. Because when I was growing up, we went to church. You couldn't chew no gum. They caught you chewing gum. You was in trouble for a long time. And listen, they didn't have to tell you be quiet. They just look. They had a look that would cut you. If, if that look was a razor, it would cut you. It would, and you wouldn't move no more doing until you'd go to sleep before you do anything here. You'll sit there like a soldier. <laughs> I'm just saying, we want to enjoy our Christian walk. We really do. We want to be happy in this thing. You don't want to be always bogged down and so tense you can't enjoy life. That's not God's way. It is not. God wants you to be happy. He wants you to enjoy this. Amen. And sometimes people be so tense, it's almost like, man, are you kidding me? This can't be what he called me to. It ain't. <laughs> he wants you to enjoy yourself. Amen. Amen. Verse 17 again. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Verse 18. For not he that, for not he that commandeth himself is approved. Somebody say, he who will be his way to the top. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Watch this. For not he that commendeth himself is approved. He might have all his way up there. But whom the Lord commendeth. See, if man puts you up, or vote you up, man can vote you down. But if God puts you up, I don't care what they do. Somebody said he can't touch this. It's the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. That's the route you're going to have to go. Because you go this route, you're trying to elbow your way to the top. See, you might get there. But don't forget, God is at the door. God is at the door. And that's what you're going to have to depend on. You want somebody to keep trusting him. Don't let up. Keep trusting him. Let God do it and you'll know it's done. Go to Proverbs chapter 27. Proverbs chapter 27. And look at verse 2. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth. A stranger, and not thine own lips. See, that's where pride gets in. People, look at what I did. Look at what I'm doing. See, lots of times when it comes to the distributions that we have, I really don't, I don't have to show up. I supported it. I did it as unto the Lord. And that's all. Let it go forth. You, you, I work with this group of people who was doing some services for behind the storm. And the guys were, they was putting free roofs on people's house and everything. And they was doing so well. I said, man, what can I do to, you know, kind of recognize these guys here? And I went and talked to them. And, and uh, I said, listen, I'd like to get a picture with you all. He said, we will take a picture, but we'll only take a side profile. Didn't want to be seen. Didn't want to be recognized for that. And I said, okay, I get it. We don't even have to take a picture. I said, can I feed you all? They said, yes, we'll eat what you bring. And I fed them. Now, but here's my point. I talked to them and we was talking about it. They said, hey, listen, no. We hand and feet for Jesus Christ. We don't have to be seen. They waiting for their reward. Come on up there. They ain't trying to get no recognition from man because they know God going to continue to increase them because they're not trying to be seen. And then I've worked with groups that had their face up and everything. Yeah. Want to be seen in everything they do or recognized for it. It's almost like in church sometimes if somebody name ain't called when something is done. They offend it. Listen, let's get this thing right. I want mine from God. I don't have to call my name. God sees and God knows. And the Bible says, he who comes to God must believe that he is. He is what? He's real. And he, not the people, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So nobody get it wrong. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Come on. Good measure, press down, shake together and running over. Shall who? Men given to your bosom. You ain't got to ask them. God's going to direct their heart. 
So don't get it twisted. God's going to direct their heart. You ain't got to ask them. You ain't got to let them know. They'll be giving. They won't know why. But God will direct their heart. So we want to make sure that we be the hand and feet for Jesus Christ. My face don't always have to be up in it. No, God, when they did that, that blessed me. It was about 15 of them, and they all wanted to turn sideways and take a picture. I said, well, I'm not going to even put y'all through that. They were generous to do that. I said, no, I'm not going to put y'all through that. We don't have to do it. We don't even have to take a picture. They was happy because they did not want to be seen in it at all. Go to Romans chapter 2, and we'll close there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 2, and let us look at verse 29. But he which is a Jew, which is one inwardly, get this now, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men. Come on but of God. See, circumcision today, spiritual circumcision, is of the heart because that's what God is looking at. What is circumcision? Circumcision is trimming away the fat, the, 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 the unnecessary, the extra that's in the way, but in God, trimming away the fat from the heart, getting all the fluff out of the way to purify your heart because that's what God is going to look at. Say, I'm a Jew inwardly, and that's what he wants because God is looking at the heart and man is looking at the outer appearance. You want yours from God. Yes. Is God given to a man that is right in his sight? Wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But he's going to give it to one who's been circumcised in the heart, in the spirit. The Bible said the day is come when the Father will seek those who will worship him in what? Truth. In spirit and in truth, because he's looking at your heart. He said, for the Lord seeketh for such kind of worshipers. Say, I'm that worshiper. Hallelujah. Give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> True worshipers is what he's looking for. True worshipers. And God judges that by your heart. Amen. Yes. If there's anyone out there today who have never said Jesus the Lord in person to save your life too, feel free to do it. So at this time, I repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord, you know my life. You know how I've lived. I ask you to forgive me, and I receive forgiveness unto myself. I believe that Jesus died, and on the third day, God raised him from the dead, and he's my new Lord and Savior, and I thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you went through that prayer, whole heaven is rejoicing with you. But what we want you to do, what we need you to do is give us a call by calling or texting us at 601 708-3550. We have a packet of information we'd like to get out to you to help you begin the new journey with Christ. Amen. Amen. And also, if you'd like to give, to give online, click the link in the comment section. To give via text, text GNCC, and the amount you'd like to give to 73256. 73256. And while you're preparing your tithe and offering, I want to go ahead and bless them. Father, we thank you for every tithe. But Father, as they sow, they see. I pray, Lord God, that you would give them joy, wisdom, and knowledge, Lord God, to know that you are God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. And do remember, we're here on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. But before you go today, I want to bless you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his counsels upon thee and give thee peace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, Lord, as we leave this place, but not your presence, I commission the angels to watch over every person to keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Pray a hedge protection about them, and I plead the blood over them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Till we meet again, God bless you and remain blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah.